my talk is called Deep Mod Interoperability, and uh, I'm going to be covering three points basically. Uh, what is interoperability? What do I mean by deep mod interoperability? Um, why should you care about it? And how can you go about making it happen? So, first off, what is interoperability? Well, it's essentially when a system can work together with other systems. Um, so we, we take it for granted, really, that mods are compatible with each other nowadays, because really it wasn't always so. Uh, back in the days of jar mods and manual patching and deleting meta inf, you, you would have like, a definite conflict if two mods modified the same Minecraft class. Here's a uh, screenshot that I... Okay. Here's a screenshot that I found of uh, MC Patcher complaining that uh, Risigami's Army's mod loader and Better Than Wolves are both trying to replace the same Minecraft class. So, of course, it's only going to be able to replace it with one. And this is a, a whole class of issues that we just don't have anymore. Now, with you know all of these different mod loaders, um, this is a completely dead issue. And the entire class of issue is pretty much gone unless you're getting too enthusiastic with your redirect mix-ins and, you know, either using an overwrite on something, then the problem of two people trying to modify the same bit of Minecraft code, it's not an issue. And so are a lot of things, really, like item ID conflicts and block ID conflicts, stuff like that. Don't have to worry about it. Not a thing at all. And my point is that mods used to be far, far less compatible with each other than they are now. And I think it is important to recognize this because we really do take it for granted. So that's what I mean by mod, compa mod compatibility and interoperability. You can use them together. But what do I mean by deep mod interoperability? Well, in essence, the uh, term re refers to having like proper integrations between different mods. Um, so it's the difference between compatibility and integration. Uh, having proper integrations allows players to use the mods as if they were one complete unit, not this kind of disparate collection of things that they're playing with. So instead of having mods which just work alongside each other, you can have mods which cooperate and allow the player to just have a fun integrated experience. But why should you care about that? Well, I uh, I did some research. I had a poll, and uh, it was very in depth. Here's uh, here's the results. Um, people like it when there are integrations between mods, and uh, I think none of us have really learned anything there. We we already knew this, but I did actually answer a quest ask a question which did teach me some things. And that was, I asked for examples. Why do people like integrations? What integrations have stuck out to them and have they remembered? Well, of the responses that I got, there were a huge range. There was a big kind of range of Minecraft versions and mod loaders and a lot of different mods. Here are just a small selection of the responses. Uh, JEI came up a lot. And this makes sense because an um, information showing mods obviously massively benefits from being able to show information from other mods. And of course, JEI had an API, uh, REI has an API, um, EMI has an API, uh, not one which I'm using yet, but uh, <laughs> as soon as I finish this talk, I'm going to start adding uh, EMI supports to HEMA. Um, because, yeah, obviously something like this is a clear use case for um, APIs and these kind of integrations between mods. It's what that entire class of mod is used for. Um, but there were plenty of other um, 
mods mentioned as well that were in a completely different kind of category. Like, for example, Aurora's Decorations was mentioned, uh, with its amazing feature of adding variants of blocks for any kind of type of wood that it can detect. Um, it's got like this class of like a couple hundred lines of code that inspects the registry for things that look like wood. Like, the result is stuff like this. These are some uh, signposts made out of this one though. This one is some kind of wood from uh, Botania. And this one is some kind of wood from Bewitchment. And they just kind of... Yeah, sorry, it's a bit small. Um, but they, they kind of look like they're supposed to be in the mod. It's awesome. Um, people also mentioned that with ecotones installed, plants from Aurora's decorations generate in custom ecotones world gen, which I thought was quite an interesting thing I didn't know about. And that's pretty cool. Although... While we're here, I'd also like to take a quick detour just to get something off my chest. Uh, look at a couple of these examples of things people liked. Um, we've got here, where is it? Most tech mods are built to interact with each other's systems. And the biggest one is there being a single power system, RF, instead of each mod having their own. I guess we've got a four chooser over here. But that's my point. People like having unified energy. It is so much nicer as a player in a lot of circumstances. Obviously, it won't work in every circumstance. You're always going to have lots of mods that will perform, that will be way better as an experience with their own custom energy system, sure. But for a lot of mods, just having one unified energy system is a really good thing for the player and also for the mod developer. It means they don't have to worry about making their own energy system or working out which mod is the best that they should use um, and hook into uh, or having to hook into like lots of different mods to use all of their energy systems. For a lot of mods, unified energy is a good thing. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway. One thing that was also mentioned a couple of times was Hina's compatibility with Rat's Mischief. Um, I think this was probably mentioned just because I posted the survey in the Hina Discord. But uh, anyway, I want to tell the story behind that. So Hema's a vampire mod. Give me a second. And Rat's Mischief is a mod that adds rats. You probably know about it. And... One day I added Rats Rats to the list of mobs that Hema vampires can drink blood from. I believe I was probably inspired by this Tumblr post. Um, and the result was that uh, Rats added a commit to Rats Mischief. Which, uh, I'm not going to read that out to you, but... What it does is it makes rats explode if they touch me specifically. Um, it, it just added in the uh, on entity collision thing for rat entities. If uh, if the UUID is me, then it explodes. So I thought, <laughs> right, if if he doesn't like rats being drunk from. Why don't I make rats drink blood themselves? So I spent a couple of hours when I probably should have been sleeping um, at about 1am making rats become vampires if you drink blood from them. And they had all of these little red particles around them. I think I've got a picture in a couple of slides ago. Give me a minute. TPS is really low, so if you press a button it stays pressed for like 10 minutes. There you go. Um, you see, it's got these red, uh, red particles around it, and it says "Vampy Rat." That's the uh, name tag for it there. And it will go around drinking blood from everything that it could see. It, it was it was nice. To play. Um, it was really fun to make, and it was fun to play as well. A lot of people installed both and had a go. It was, it was you know, they loved it. Although. It wasn't enough to get off rats explode list, so uh, I guess I'm going to have to do something else there. It's fine though, just don't ask why I'm uh, 
holding gunpowder on his SMP. So I think that's getting to the root of why you should care <laughs> about mod integrations, because it, it is fun. Like, it's fun to make and it's fun to enjoy as a player. Um, is anyone here familiar with the modder's trap? Of, uh, okay. The modder's trap. The modder's trap? What's that? No. Alright, so the idea is that basically we spend so much time modding the game that we don't play it nearly as much as we actually want to. Oh, I yeah, think I okay. Is that relatable? That I'm just like picking out mods to play. Right. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of people saying it's relatable in chat. Um, but yeah, I think this is actually <laughs> one of the reasons why many people don't bother with these cross-mod interactions. Because um, I think some of us, at least, I know that I used to before I realised that this was a problem, but I would spend a lot of time working on my own mods and I wouldn't really play other people's mods. And it was a real shame, really, because it meant that I was kind of becoming out of touch with what's fun to play. And also, I was missing out on this, you know, huge source of fun and inspiration for uh, new features and just, you know, enjoyment. Like, that's the reason I got into modding anyway. And I wasn't, I wasn't participating in that anymore. I was just writing a load of code and not actually getting the benefits of it. So my point is, you should get out there and play the game more and see what you're missing. Because I guarantee you'll care more about mod integrations there. Um, I do think that this con and events like it are a great way of encouraging that. So a big thank you to the organisers, really. It is great to see so many mods working together and just so many people coming and having a go at all of these mods. Uh, there's been all sorts of uh, fun stuff going on, all these different events. There was... Uh, people going around uh, collecting all these trading cards. It's it's great. Um, but yeah, stuff like this, stuff like joining SMPs. I've joined a couple modded SMPs recently, and every time I go on, I have an idea for some new feature to add to one of my mods. It's a great idea, I think, um, to go and play, play the game more, basically. <laughs> Code less, play more. And then you'll be able to cope more. Um, so I am going to talk about like the types of mod integration and deep mod interoperability and how you can go about them in a minute. But first I'd like to talk about it where it goes wrong in a sense, anti-compatibility. So uh, I'm going to talk about Greg. Now, a lot of cross-mod interactions aren't actually planned. Um, I see we've got uh, Oh Lord in chat because I, I mentioned Greg. Yep, yep, Greg Tech Greg. So a lot of cross-mod interactions just kind of naturally come about, uh, sometimes because of recipes, sometimes because of um, two you know, random features that happen to work well together. Um, and they allow players to do things that neither mod author actually intended. And I think when these are good, we call them unintentional interactions. But when they're bad, we call them exploits. But really, it's just two sides of the same coin. So ages ago, there was a uh, duping exploit between Tinker's Construct and Greg Tech. And I, th I think there are actually a couple of these over the years. I'm just talking about the, the first one. Um, and when he found out about this, the Tinker's dev, uh, MDO, I think that's how it's pronounced anyway. I added this message to the log when both mods were installed. Uh, saying, Greg Tech exit present. Please disable or reverse smelting recipes from Greg Tech. Now, that, that happened. That was a thing. But then Greg, the author of Greg Tech, was not happy with this. And then added this message to the log, <laughs> which is uh, a lot of text. Um, and I'd, I'd like to bring two things to your attention here. The first is the word smolten, which is both incredibly fun as a word, 
and also I I don't think it, I don't think that's a real word. I don't think it is, but it's it's still a nice word. Um, the second thing and the more important thing is this bit here. To disable this message, bug MD until he fixes it the proper way. Don't don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't do anything like this. <laughs> um, my point is, I... Well, actually, I'll get to my point of this whole thing after I give you the other... the other thing that I'd like to talk about. Um, so, Imabis, who may or may not be here, um, once made a mod called RPIC. Yep, Imabis is indeed here. <laughs> um, if I get something wrong, shout at me. So, RPIC added power conversion between Red Power and Industrial Craft. Um, and people found this useful and they liked it. Um, remember my uh, people like unified energy slide from earlier? Yeah, turns out they really do like unified energy. Um, then suddenly, its forum post just got taken down by the Industrial Craft forum moderators because um, Elaram, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, the Red Power dev uh, basically said that Red Power plugins which do energy conversion aren't allowed. And I get it, right? When we publish mods, it's, it's giving something that you've made to the world. And when other people make changes or do something that you, you know, that fundamentally alters how people experience what you've made, then it can feel like they're saying that your vision of what you want is wrong and like they're fighting you. But please don't, don't retaliate because they're not fighting with you. They're just making their own thing. Don't do all of these kind of anti-compatibility nonsense. I think it's a, a bit less common recently which is good, because honestly, it helps nobody. Anyway, on to uh, actual, actual good things. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few ways of doing integrations, um, and why they help. So, first I'm going to talk about Massive Plus. So, recipes are one of the most visible forms of, of interoperability. Um, and I, they're also one of the easiest to get right, really. So, let's say you make a tech mod and you add metal plates because, you know, every tech mod adds metal plates. That's just the thing tech mods do. Um, you add a recipe for your metal plates. Let's say you put some arm plates together, like a, you know, fill the crafting table and you get nine plates, I don't know. And then you I don't know, add another recipe which says that you put iron plates together like a chest and it makes a fluid pipe, let's say. Because you know tech mods add pipes, it's just thing tech mods do. And when you define your recipe for the uh, fluid pipe, you use your item name, your item ID in the recipe and you test it and it's all good. Then one day, a player comes along, and they don't like the way that you make iron plates in your mod. And they have multiple tech mods installed, because of course they do. And each mod adds its own metal plates, because of course it does. Because everybody's too scared to be original. And the player likes the system of making metal plates in some other mod. And um, they set up a production line to make metal plates from those mods. And then one day they need to transport some fluids, and they've heard good things about your fluid pipes. So they decide to try out your mod by crafting some. And they can't, because they got the wrong plates. And I think this is a simple issue, and I, I think we all know the solution. You add your item to the correct tag uh, on quilt and fabric. That's C, iron on the sword plates, and forge. It's forge plate slash iron. In my opinion, forge is tag much nicer, but whatever and you modify your recipe to use the tag instead of a reference to your item name. And great, that's cool. 
cool thing about it is it's data packable, so if you forget something, then another mod author or mod pack maker, maker can fix it for you. And I think that's one of the simplest ways of interoperability. And we've all we've all seen this go wrong, I think, and we've all seen this uh, go right. Now let's have another let's have a look at another scenario. This one's about a magic mod. I'd also like to point out these are not about actual mods. I I made these scenarios up. So let's say you're making a magic mod, and your magic mod adds spells that you can cast with a wand, because of course it does, that's what magic mods do. That's right, I'm calling out magic mods as well as tech mods here, for being unoriginal. And you hold your spells in a big enumeration, because, you know, it's it's nice and easy to, oh, use, use a staff, well done. <laughs> nah, um, <laughs> because, you know, if you just put your spells in a big enum, it's nice and easy to add more spells, you just add more enum values, and it's, it's dead simple to serialize them over the network. You can just, you know, use a enum to order a lot of varint. I think packet byte buff has a right enum method, actually, but whatever. And everything's great. And then one day you get a ping on Discord, and it says, hey, I want to make an add-on to your magic mod. I have some spells I'd like to add. How do I do that? And you realize that they can't, because the only way to do that would be to use ASM or something to uh, do enum, ex enum extension. And you can't in good con conscience recommend that somebody ASM into your mod and extend your enum. So what you reply with is, uh, please give me a couple of weeks to rewrite my spell system and I'll, I'll get back to you. So, um, yes, you know, extension is extremely cursed. So, you rewrite your spells. Well, exactly, then they disappear because you spent too long and they don't want to make the add-on anymore. So, you rewrite your spell system and you do it right this time. You make a spell registry. Vanilla Minecraft provides you with all of these excellent tools. Just please use them. If you're adding some kind of content that you need to address by name, Registries are a great way of managing it, as long as that content will stay the same throughout the course of the game. If it's going to change, like, the data pack reloads, then you can use dynamic registries. They're weird. Um, but yeah, registries are great, because you get so much for free. You get namespace entry names, so there's no collisions. You get tags for free. You get all sorts of useful codec stuff. You can still transfer stuff over the network without using much bandwidth because registries provide int IDs for that purpose. And content can just be super easily added by other mods. No weird enum extensions, just a registry.register um, call. So this is another type of interoperability. This is extendability. Um, you know, the ability for other mods to add content to yours. So, just remember, registries are your friend. If you've got some enums, are using value of and dot name a lot, you might want to use a registry. If you're using a map between a string or a resource location and your thing, then you also might want to use a registry. You might not. There might be some situations where you don't want to, but in a lot of situations, that might be the correct choice. I think pretty much all of the mods that I make recently None of them were published because I um, ran out of motivation halfway through. But all of them, all the ones that I've started recently, have used a registry for something. We've got um, Hema, of course, the big one, um, that's got an ability uh, registry. <laughs> um, people are saying steal from Hema, but I, I didn't see what for. Um, if, if you're just making registries, um, on put on fabric, it is super easy. I don't know how you do it on Forge, but uh, you just do uh, I think it's fabric registry builder, and that'll handle everything for you. Um, yeah, I'd imagine it is easy on Forge as well. I, I don't know the specific methods, but yeah. Uh, someone said, Are you a vampire right now? I'm not, but I can be. 
Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, morbid time. Did someone just say it's morbid time? <laughs> <laughs> Great, now I've uh, now I've uh, lost lost track of where I am. Right, actually, you'll never guess what the next slide is. Morbid. It's vampires. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, the only scenario that is actually real. Also, I'm gonna turn off um, vampirism for me just because it is it's overexposing my slides, and I thought I should read what they say. So. Let's have... Yes, the BL in Wilbur does stand for Morbius. <laughs> this is not where I expected this to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's have a look at another scenario. Let's say you're making a vampire mod. Let's, let's say it's called Morb. And vampire players can suck blood from other entities as long as it makes sense that those entities would have blood so you decide to let vampires drink blood from all living entities but you soon realize that's an issue because um you can now drink blood from armor stands because armor stands are living entities for some reason but it's because of an inventory i think and it's just, I, I don't know it's dumb it's dumb is my point and you wouldn't expect this so you go back to drawing board, try and work out what you should let yourself drink blood from. And you think, well, what about, what about mob entities? I think uh, somebody said there. Well, of course, the issue there is uh, this thing doesn't have blood. Uh, it's just occurred to me I've just let a skeleton loose and you're all in adventure mode. Give me a second. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, that, that thing didn't have blood, that skeleton. So you add a tag, because a tag will let you add a nice little list of things, and it's extendable as well. So, you know, our, our last, last situation was about extendability, and this checks off that box, because other mods can add their own mobs to be um, drinkable by putting them in the tag. I know what you're thinking. Nobody is going to add their own mobs to the tag. And yeah, you're right. So maybe it would be best to have some kind of predicates, but then it's not extendable. And like players or server owners can't overwrite it. But what if we could have the best of both worlds? The configurability and the extendability that comes with tags and the kind of hassle-free automaticness of working out the correct mods, the correct mobs in code. Well, you can't. Not yet, anyway. But, here's a thing. Auto tag. Uh, auto tag is a mod by a pace who I think is here. One with the, one with the sheep, I think. <laughs> hey, uh. um, and this thing is brilliant. It will auto fill tags with entries given by a predicate in code, uh, while still letting data packs or mods or whatever blacklist or force insert entries themselves with JSON. However, its API is not yet separated from the part of the mod which also fills certain common tags. Um, I was working on a PR. I was hoping to be ready by now, but gradual multi-project setups make me cry. Um, so watch this space. Um, once the API version is read, once the API only version is ready, I think this will basically be the holy grail for uh, configurable, additional, additionable, extendable is the word that I'm looking for, sets of anything in a registry. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Apace, for making this. Sorry that the PR isn't ready yet. Um, right, so what have we learned here? Well, use tags when you can for configurability and extendability. Use predicates when you have to, because tags won't be practical, and combine them and use auto tag if you're in the future. Right. 
I'm going to stop doing the uh, um, kind of scenario things, and I'm just going to talk about things that are good. So if you want people to create mods which interface with your own, whether those are add-ons for your mods or just separate mods with some kind of interoperability between them, then you'll want to have your mod on some kind of maven. Because if you don't, people who want to build against it will have to build it themselves and put it on a maven local, and nobody wants to do that. So Jetpack is very popular, because in many cases it just works, except that these days it seems like it doesn't. I think it has trouble with like newer Java versions or something, but in a lot of cases I've tried to get something from Jetpack, and it said that the build has failed. So please don't rely on this. If you are only using Jetpack, please also check after every release that it did actually build properly. Um, and also, it can just be a lousy experience in general, because sometimes you have to wait for the mod to build when you're syncing your Gradle project or whatever. Um, so yeah, it is it is a pain. Um, now, if you're uploading to Curse Forge, then people can use the Curse Forge Maven, or Curse Maven, which is a nice alternative. However, this approach won't pull in your own dependencies um, transitively, so that can be a bit annoying. Uh, if you're uploading to Modrinth, then you can point people to the Modrinth Maven, which functions similarly. I do not know if it pulls in things transitively. I could not see that on their docs, but I might just be blind. Okay, people are saying it has the same issue. Cool. I mean, I I think that's fine, really. Like the curse forge and modern maven are good for bringing in what you need to bring in. It's annoying that you have to bring in other things as well, but as you know, it, it's good that it's there. Exactly, that they're passable. Um, now, the thing is though, it's not all that difficult to get your mod onto a proper maven repository. You can even use a free static file host and upload your files to that if you really need to, and that will function. Uh, what I do is I use Reposolite, which is this uh, really nice uh, Maven repo software. Um, it is, I think, in alpha, the version that I'm using, um, Reposolite version 3, but it is working. I've just got that on a cheap €4 Euro a month Hetzner server. If you do something like that, then you can upload the gradual um, publish task, and you can have multiple repositories you can have some of those repositories only visible to certain people, all sorts of cool stuff like that. And you can also use the server for other things. Um, I'm using Caddy for reverse proxying, so I've got lots of, lots of things on that server. And then depending on the uh, specific uh, domain name that you're using to connect to it, then uh, it will give you different things. But anyway, that's off the topic. But yes, the other thing is, See if any of your friends have Maven servers that they're um, willing for you to use. Um, you will notice that a lot of people have um, their mods on other people's Mavens. I mean, don't don't go around DMing random people you don't know to say, "Hey, can I put my stuff on your on your servers? Can I use all your storage space and all your bandwidth?" Because I'm not going to say yes. It was annoying. But if you you know if your friends and someone then, uh, yeah, that might be a good idea. Um, <laughs> um, someone said, uh, I will find a random person to Maven to upload to. Yes, if you uh, manage to brute force somebody's API key to their Maven, then you're permitted to use it. Right. For legal reasons, this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, if you're the one making the add-on, um, or the mod which hooks into another mod, whatever, they're basically the same thing from our perspective, then you're going to have to make sure that you only try and load the other mods classes if the mod is definitely there, of course. So, uh, in uh, basically any mod loader, this is nice and easy to do. You just uh, make sure that all of the uh, mod code, all of the code which uh, talks to that other mod, is safely put away into a, a different class, and then 
that class is only, or, or the methods from that class are only accessed if that mod is loaded, which you can check through any, any mod loader. Um, if you're using Fabric or Quilt, you can add extra mod initializer entry points. That's what I always do. Add an extra one for each mod just to separate away that kind of clutter of all the different if mod loaded then do this just move each one of those into its own uh, mod initializer of course it might be that the mod itself has its own it, it declares its own entry points in which case that's great you don't even have to do the if is mod loaded thing you just add the special uh, entry point and um then you can just know that the mod is loaded because otherwise that uh, entry point would have been would not have been um called so that's great um also if you're mixing mixing into other mods it's probably a good idea to use a secondary mixins.json for that uh just for the same reason of keeping that cluster away from your main one i think you can also change the uh default uh required injection points you can set that to zero so it won't fail if uh uh injects uh can't find where they need to be but yeah mixing into other mods of course always a last resort see if you can see if you can do anything else first mix in first official compiler <laughs> nice so events that's another thing i want to talk about because events are an amazing way of letting other mods change the behavior of yours so in hema i've got loads of events there's one that lets you stop vampires from burning one that lets you trigger vampire burning one that runs when a player is converted to a vampire one that runs if it's deconverted uh, there's like an event to let you modify damage taken by a vampire all sorts of stuff and this is great because it means that you can uh, as a as an add-on developer you can do all sorts of things without having to uh, that you can do all sorts of things to change the behavior of the mod that has the event without having to do something nasty like mixing in to that mod uh, making an event is super easy on Quilt or Fabric, you just create your pullback interface, create the event with the event factory method, and then uh, grab the invoker and invoke it when you want. Uh, just don't cache the invoker. And on Forge, you just uh, create the event class and then post it on the event bus. Uh, as far as I know, anyway, I have not tried creating my own events on Forge yet. I haven't done any Forge dev in ages. I should, I should do more of that. So, yeah, the, the cool thing about doing this is that you can then also start to put more of your own functionality of your own mods into handlers for these events. And that kind of moves on to something else that I want to touch on. Because making your mods more compatible with others and providing opportunities for interoperability also provides more opportunities for your own mod to develop by... Providing these utilities for add-ons by using registries and by using events and by whenever you add a feature thinking, how can I code this to make it more extendable? You will make your mod easier to build upon, not just for other people, but for future you as well. By making my mods with interoperability in mind, I've had opportunities to create things I wouldn't otherwise have been able to. I've been able to add features more easily and to easily provide configuration for my players to change mods to play it how they wish to. I've been able to do things like creating these items. Uh, you may have seen these. These are the travel tokens for HEMA. You throw those into a HEMA ritual altar and perform the ritual, and it teleports you down into the booth. That is done via a HEMA add-on. They are indeed data-based, however, they are using a custom uh, ritual handler to 
do the teleportation. In Basima, the only ritual handlers are the one which gives you more ability points and the one which lets you open the ability skill tree thing in the jiggle uh, UI. So Hema Extra's blanket con adds an extra handler to let you teleport somewhere. And then it uses a regular recipe because rituals are just recipes to let these things teleport you to where the booth is and where the uh, upstairs bit is. So yeah, being able to make your mod more extendable also lets you add more things for yourself, not just for other people. So if you're selfish, there's some other uh, motivation to do this. But the other thing that it has that it has given me, that being able to, that adding all of these uh, interoperability features has given me, is that it's reminded me of the social nature of modding. Because everything builds on something else. Everyone is building their stuff on somebody else's work. And sure, I've, I've said about these things, but I've also, in a way, only been talking about this last point. None of us would be here if it weren't for the rest of us. Thank you. All right, I, uh, I'm gonna click this button here, which will apparently open up the floor to questions. So let's see if that works. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, write a short question, sign it, throw it in the hopper. You all know how this works. Everyone here gets a free vampire hat. Ignore the fact that you can get them free at the uh, keep the booth anyway. There you go, there's some more hats. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's exactly what I expected, though. Um, people Can you all, uh, like, not do that in the middle? You're blocking Lemma's recording. <laughs> That's a very specific one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I, I think I think it's fine. Uh, so this question, which is uh, too big for the screen, says, I recently searched for a tag that includes all blocks with inventories. I ended up finding none. Uh, what do I do then? At least I think that's what the rest of the question said. I cannot see the rest of it. So in that case, what you can do is uh, provide, it is get a predicate that checks if the block is a block entity that has an inventory, but that's going to be quite difficult to do um, unless you are on Forge and you can do some kind of capability stuff. Again, I do not remember how a lot of Forge stuff works. And I think maybe in the latest Fabric stuff, you can use the uh, API API. I'm not too sure. Um, in in any case, this might be a good a good thing for auto tag to do. Um, I'm not sure though, or perhaps just um, PRing in uh, a you know tag JSON to add things to to add blocks to that to add blocks to that tag if they provide an inventory. If you see any mods which have uh, yeah my hat is a haunter I, I don't know I don't know who that is <laughs> but um yeah my, my point is probably try predicate but that's gonna be difficult so it might just be best to make other people use a tag in that case right what else we got
I have my suspicions on his G, dude. <laughs> that would make sense, wouldn't it? Now, uh, yeah, I hear crap. how does that wood mod determine what looks like wood? That would be a question for Lambda. Lambda, how does that wood mod determine what looks like wood? That wood mod being Aura's decorations. Is the, is the answer too complex to put in a sentence? Is Lambda even still here? Lambda is not still here, I don't think. Okay. Nope, she's not. Oh, uh, she is. She is. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I see Lambda. If it's more than two sentences, I can I can skip the question. <laughs> because I know it is like 500 lines of code, and that might take a while to explain. <laughs> Isn't there like a wood registry or something? Not yet. Kind of. Yeah, right, you, you, us, like... usage of names, materials, and a bit more stuff. Okay, I, I prefer Petrax, um version, which is uh, every time someone loads the game, it sends all blocks to Lambda personally, who looks at the registry and marks which ones are <laughs> I think I remember hearing from her in the previous thing that basically the way it works is that it just collects a library of different textures for each wood type, and then... It assembles those together on the fly into the woodblock variant. I see. I'm gonna put on a, an actual hat, so uh, I've got two now. <laughs> right. Uh, this is uh, one from Amy that says, Plus, Will, can I use your maven? Sure. But only if you uh, upload full uh, MKVs of Morbius 2022 and nothing else. <laughs> right. Oh, there's a lot of things there. I wasn't here for the first two minutes. Can you restart it? Right, sure, let's go. Right, right from the beginning. You're all sitting here. None of you are leaving. I'm doing the whole thing again. <laughs> okay, never mind. It is difficult to spam press the previous slide button. And also, it's not actually doing anything because the questions are up. Right, um, I can't read the ones right at the bottom, because they're... Yeah, just go uh, from the top. What is it? Alright, what do you think the best way to do runtime okay. checking slash modification to other mods is? So, I'm not sure what you mean by runtime checking. Like, check if the mod is there, because, like, that's... Just an is mod loaded thing in most loaders. I say most, all all loaders. See if you can work around it without mixing in stuff. If they still aren't, if that still isn't possible, I guess use a mix in, but you've got to use those very sparingly because of course there's no guarantee that the version of the mod that you're building against is going to have anything in common code wise with the version of the mods that a player is using right let's have a look all right what about mods that have very different balances of energy uh, wouldn't a unified energy API uh, cause issues? Sure, as why I said a lot of mods wouldn't uh, wouldn't be appropriate for a unified energy API. However, a huge amount of mods just adds like a, a couple of a couple of things, like a couple of machines or a couple of power generation. Um, utilities and for all of those things the options are either find a mod which adds an energy API and you attach yourself to that uh, you know which then means that you can't use it with other ones unless somebody adds a proper power conversion thing 
Alternatively, write your own NG API, and now you've got to add all sorts of machines and stuff to just your uh, small little mods, which wanted to add one little power generation thing. Uh, alternatively, use a unified API, which just solves these issues. And for things which have massively different balance or massive different like conception of energy, they can use their own thing still. You can have a main, like, official style API and still... Not to, right, to people are saying... People, people to, are saying... Sorry, go up. Not to interrupt, but, uh... Couldn't, like, this be a good case for, like, a power conversion thing to come into play where, like, every 100 of power A could convert into one of power B with power A being, like, way more plentiful in how much you get of it. Right, so you're saying that the, instead of a unified NG API, there should be a, an API that lets different energy APIs register how much like they are in terms of... Thing. Yeah, like or a power like conversion like API. Or like that one block in Matani that turns mana into RF, something like that. Oh, sure, but, oh. but, but, then, but then the issue is when when you do just want to make a mod that just adds, like, one machine. Yeah, uh, okay. I actually made a library to try and interconvert between systems like that a while back, and let me just say it's hard to convince people to use it, is the main exactly. issue. Exactly, exactly. That's the point. That's, that's the thing. If it's built into a mod loader, or... Well, not a mod loader, but if it's built into a standard library for a mod loader, then you're not going to have to try and convince everyone to use it. It's just there. And people can still not use it if they want to. They're not forced to. It's... And it, it is great for players. As I said, th this wasn't like a loaded question that I gave people. I just said, what are some integrations that you like? And like three of them independently out of like 20 responses said, I like RF. I like how everything uses the same energy and I don't have to worry about that. Alright, what else we got? Um, uh, will you consider contributing to the quilt wiki? It seems you... Well, I have terrible short-term memory because I, I read the rest of that question like two seconds ago and it's it's already gone from my mind. I think it was just, it seems you have some stuff that would be, you know, some information that would be useful to add. And yes, I did start writing out some, like, uh, wiki page drafts, uh, just, you know, on my computer. And they weren't very good. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll try contribute to support wiki. It should. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. Right. Well, I clicked a button there and nothing happened. Let me try that again. I don't see really anybody moving, so I think nice. something went wrong. All right, settle down, settle down. I think I might just um, do these questions like super quick, just like a quick fire question oh, round. Fire. Yeah, go for it. Right. <clears throat> quick fire questions. What APIs would you like to see implemented to ease mod interoperability? Materials, because you told me to say that. No. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, materials does sound like a uh, cool API. Um, uh, I can see a lot of ways that it would be useful. So yes, materials API. Uh, what's your favorite mod connection with your mod that somebody else made? Um, I'm not going to go with a mod connection. I'm going to go with a data pack connection. Uh, a few Hema players have made uh, data packs, which are really cool. I haven't played with them because of the issue that I said earlier, which was that I don't play enough Minecraft. So, yeah, it, it's going to be that, because it's it's done by the players, and 
that means it's going to be more kind of authentic you know it's like people what people actually want to play this i know it's because people play with this right uh, it does not want me to accept this question don't uh, don't crouch i'm not crouching yeah the top Does one work for you? Yeah, the top one. Yeah, that's weird. One second. Right, okay. Um I I think G Dude's gonna go and make this uh, question appear. Squid Y. Okay, right. I'll just I'll just read it out. Uh this question says a less serious question, but what is the most egregious example of purposeful mod incompatibility slash anti-interoperability that you can think of? And my answer that is, you say egregious, I think you mean greg -regious. Now, next question, which is better for compat, JSON through data packs or all Java slash Kotlin? Um, I'm going to say, yeah, neither, really. Depends on what you're aiming for. Uh, data pack compact for certain things uh java slash code for other things i'd say in more cases data pack compact is better just because it's more accessible you can uh, do stuff without having to be a developer and that means that the players can modify things to how they want it to be uh what else what are your thoughts on using minecraft commands as an interface for interoperability between mods between mods, I'd say, yeah, like it's okay, but yeah. Uh, in data packs, of course, they're a brilliant way of doing things. But in my opinion, if you've got, if you've added commands to do things, then you should also be adding better. Like you should also be adding an API because you have all of the. Uh, what's the word I'm okay, looking for? Back. You have everything you need there if you're making commands available you have everything you need to also make the api yeah basic building blocks. you have all the building blocks you need to make your api uh, what else we got It'll uh, how do you find a midpoint between interoperability and balanced ga uh, balanced gameplay as a content developer um you don't hema is unbalanced opinion on hema cards and their economic ramifications answer this one on discord um Uh, when is Morbius coming to HEMA? Yesterday. This one just says PP. This one just says Arch Linux. Uh, can I try catch all... Where are the questions going? Do you do... It, what are you doing? It's working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not doing the thing. Do the thing. Um, well, all the questions just disappeared because I think it's because I spammed the button like five minutes no, ago. I'm just clearing the spam. All oh, right, so I wanted to read the spam. <laughs> Why would you read the spam? Because it's funny. Um, okay, well, read that spam. Okay, I'm reading this spam, which says, when is Morbius coming to Hema? And now this one says, how do you find... Oh, no, I've already done that one. Well, that's it. <laughs> um, no, but to give a serious answer to this question, because before I just said, I don't, Hema was unbalanced. Um... I don't really think it's at... I don't really think those two things are at odds with one another. In fact, I think if you make your stuff more interoperable, then you will, as a side effect, make it more configurable. And if you make it more configurable, then you can... Well, then players can adjust the balance to what works well for them. So I think that the two things aren't at odds at all. All right, I think that's all. Thank you. That was quick. Thanks, Will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, finally, that took a long time for my message to appear. Yeah, they, they, they do. There's another one coming.
Whose book is that over there? I'm gonna go into adventure mode, do your worst. There's a book over here. There's a book over here. 